You're listening to episode 801 of the Father Bills Podcast. Welcome back. This week's episode is entitled, Mary, the Blessed Disciple, given on the Solemnity of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary, 2021. Today we celebrate God through the gift of the Blessed Virgin Mary via her Blessed Assumption. The solemnity of the Catholic Church, this is the solemnity of the Catholic Church whereby we recognize that she was taken up body and soul into heaven. Often we hear this is the result of the Immaculate Conception, that is, her being conceived without sin. And this is true. Her Immaculate Conception, keep in mind, was a great gift, a singular gift, given to her by God in view of of his merits, of his death and resurrection. So her life began without sin. That's a great start. Anybody else here? (laughs) Yeah, I didn't think so. Me neither. But it also ended without sin. Ended with a state of grace. Now, it's important, I want to emphasize this, that this is a privilege thing But at the same time, she had her free will all through this, all through her life. And so we praise God for giving Mary salvation in heaven because it prefigures what we hope for. We may may not be assumed into heaven, but we hope for heaven in our own personal situations. So not ignoring any of God's grace, we must add to this mix, this mix of grace, that she was the first of all disciples. Again, a privileged place in salvation history. The word disciple comes from the Greek word meaning follower or learner. So if you have a hero, or you love a certain teacher or a musician or a group, maybe someone who inspires you to be like them, maybe a sports figure, you maybe want to learn from them because they have such great knowledge then you'd be considered a disciple of theirs. Now, it may be easy to think that Mary, while she uh, was born without sin, that she had no issues. Well, while she died in a state of grace, she lived a life that was truly human. That meant she had temptations. We don't hear about those temptations, but we hear them more dramatically in the life of Jesus. Because he, too, lived a life without sin, right? But temptation was not uh, removed. He was not preserved against temptations in the sense that there were none. Rather, he had temptations and never gave in. And that is what the church is saying, too, that Mary, as a human person, also had temptations but never gave in. She started with grace, she lived the life of grace, and she ended her life in grace. But we might be easily thought, well, we think that, well, of course, she had no sin, so she never made a mistake. Well, we can all make mistakes. Mistakes aren't necessarily sins. But we might say, well, then she really didn't live a fully human life. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. She lived and had freedom to choose. Just because she was born without sin, we might make the error of like, well, she was kind of just destined for this end. I'm like, well, possibly, God only knows, but we can't give up this thought that she made a free will decision when somebody named Gabriel, the angel, came to her and offered her, said, behold, you will bear a son and name him Jesus. What was her answer to this? She said, yes. The Latin is fiat. Yes to the angel Gabriel. And this yes, a freely given yes, reversed the no in the Garden of Eden by someone named Eve. And of course, the devastation that came from that original sin, Mary was part of the reversal. 
she's not the Savior. Jesus is the Savior. But we should thank God that she not only was uh, given that singular grace of being conceived without sin, but she then, out of her free will, acted in a way that kept her in that state of grace. Of course, she did act in that way because God's grace was with her. But God's grace is with us, and I'm not sure we can all say that we live a life completely without sin. This is where she's a model. God's gracious work was with her, and it can be with us as well. So you see, it was completely a free gift that she said yes to the Father's invitation to be the mother of the Christ. And it was her free will decision to say yes or no when things came her way. She said no to temptation. And yes to grace. She even, at one point, had a, think about this, she had a moment where she pushed somebody who said no to something. No, it's not my time yet. You remember who that was? That's Jesus himself. At the wedding of Cana. And she said to others, in a very passive way to Jesus, though, but to others, do whatever he says. Of course, Jesus was persuaded by that. That's why we ask Mary to pray for us, because Jesus is persuaded by Mary. That's a great mystery. How is that? I don't understand. But that's why we honor her, and we ask her and other saints to pray for us. So in her yes, God is at work. In her yes, miracles happen through God. And we can find encouragement in that. Here we are. COVID is once again upon us. We're wearing masks. The fires are once again in our area and smoke is billowing into our area. And we can get angry about all this. We can look outside from the window of my house. The visibility the last couple of days was less than a half a mile. I couldn't see any, anything but the house across the street. And I'm tempted to get angry. Then I think, oh, I'm just going to pretend that's fog. <laughs> right? When I go outside, it doesn't smell like fog. I'm not breathing water. I'm breathing particulate. Not good. But see, then I need help. Because I could be tempted to get angry and bitter. I could be tempted to be in a rebellious state. But I need to make a decision. That God's grace is bigger than any of this stuff. That I need to be focused about his love and it being greater than whatever the weather is. That I would not be a fair-weathered person. That no matter whether it's dark or light, smoky or clear, rainy, freezing, or the perfect 82 degrees on a you know, nice sunny day, that God's love is still with me. And that he is with me. The reminder is that we come here today, and that's what I want to remind you of as well. We come here and we hear the scriptures proclaimed. That which happened in history is still with us today. The scriptures proclaim, when we proclaim the scriptures, Christ himself is speaking to us. It hit me just even reading the gospel today. I'm saying the words of Mary. I'm saying the words of Mary? And so we're hearing Mary's words from 2,000 years ago. They're so potent that they are still with us. We then will receive the Eucharist, which is Christ still with us. He has not abandoned us. And no matter how dark things become, and I recall last year when being with my mom and her dying weeks, the smoke was so thick in the Salem area, it was 5 o'clock in the daytime and it looked like night. That even the darkness is light for God. And as weird as all these things can be, as unsettling as all these things can be, and I'm with you on all that, God's love still conquers. We hear that he did that for Mary. Imagine what Mary was up to, what she had to deal with. Here she is. She's about to conceive as well in her life a son out of the out of the natural order, completely in a supernatural way. And what would happen to her? She's not ignorant of what the consequences were. 
nor would have Joseph. But she said yes, despite the potential of her being stoned for this. Despite people mocking her, despite her being abandoned, she still said yes. I find that a challenge. Will I still say yes to the things that happened to me in my life? Say yes to God despite the difficulties, despite the unknowns, and boy, there are a bunch of unknowns these days. Every day I have to wake up and I have to ask myself, okay, God, this is your day. What do you want me to do? I don't know about you, but there's days when I'd rather just stay in bed or days that I have no motivation whatsoever. Other days I'm just jazzed to go do something. Other days I got a real focused sense of purpose. Regardless of it all, I know I need to lean, to lean on Jesus. But I can do that with the help of Mary because I'm not alone. Listen again to Elizabeth when she hears the words from Mary or when Mary approaches. Elizabeth said to her, Blessed, this is Elizabeth to Mary, Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. She believed and she acted. She said, yes, this is Mary. And so did Elizabeth, by the way, but hers was a little, a little bit different situation. Mary had her life at risk for doing this, for saying yes, not Elizabeth. So she comes to Elizabeth to be with her. And Elizabeth recognizes that she is a disciple. She said yes to God. Imagine the strangeness that was now befalling Mary as she hears these words, for the, especially the women here in our community. Imagine if you were having a child, maybe still in the womb, and you knew that you were going to be taught by your child that you would be a follower of your child. That's a conundrum. Especially as now the child grows up into age. Especially if you have a teenager, that might be more difficult, like, I'm going to follow that person. Well, keep in mind, it's Jesus. Probably a teenager, unusual than any other teenager in the day, right? Would we still say yes? Mary was blessed and does she, what is her response to all of this? Even though you know, Elizabeth recognizes Mary as a disciple and blessed for all generations, right? Mary's response, she didn't deny it at all. She said she's a lowly servant, but in her lowliness, she was given such great favor. She gives praise to God for all that is being done through her. Would we do that in the storms of our lives? I know I, that's what I feel I need to do, but it's so hard, especially when it's so dark. Well, may we do the same anyway. May we be like Mary in this regard. May we not deny God's gifts in our lives. May we call out to him in our need and always be his disciple no matter what, even when things don't seem to make sense. May we proclaim the greatness of the Lord in all we do. May we follow in Mary's footsteps as a disciple of Jesus. For just as God has done great things in Mary, believe this, so too can he do great things in each of us. We need simply to commit ourselves freely to be his disciples. Thank you again for listening to this episode of the Father Bill's podcast. If you have any questions or comments, I invite you just to go to my website, fatherbill.org. That's F-R-B-I-L-L dot org. And there you can email me directly from the uh, webpage there. You can also get access to my Facebook page, uh, Instagram, and Twitter. And uh, we'll connect that way as well. But probably, easy, probably the, most, uh, the best way to do it really is an email directly to me. In the meantime, may God bless you. Stay safe. And see you next week. Bye-bye.